Yo people, what's up? This is Malcolm Extreme, the content machine, coming at you with another reaction video. Today, it's going to be the invasive animals destroying the planet by Good Enough. Uh, i probably seen some videos from this channel. I don't really remember. They kind of look this. It, he uses the stick figure cartoon model, which a lot of people do, like Salmonella Academy. So I get them all mixed up after a while. But yeah, we're going to be reacting to this today. Uh, but before we do, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for more notifications for the content machine, Malcolm Extreme. Let's get started. For the ones destroying entire continents. Number Those eight, loud. silver carp. Silver carp are some of the most destructive invasive fish that can infest any body of water. But I, I think I actually heard of this the one. invasive animal on the list that is actually funny. We've all seen the videos where the fish launch themselves out yeah. of the water, smacking people on the side of the head or body. No, yeah. I think there's actually been cases where people actually get knocked out from these fish as well, but I, I believe you can eat them. So they actually have some use. Of course, they sometimes send people to the hospital with broken bones or concussions, but that's just a small price to pay for comedy. Silver carp <laughs> have caused the most destruction here in the U.S., specifically in the Mississippi and its connected no, that's, rivers. That's crazy. The carp were first brought from Asia and introduced into the U.S. in the 1970s yeah. by companies trying to clean their private land. It's a, it always seems like it's people from like way back in the day like decades ago or even centuries ago that bring these invasive species into uh america and then they just run wild you know lakes this is because carp are filter feeders and consume algae plankton or really any small particle suspended in the water but of course mm. the fish ended up escaping during a flood making their way into the mississippi river where they quickly Damn. multiplied into the millions Today, these rivers are absolutely overrun That's absolutely by these fish, nuts. since they easily outcompete native animals for food. Many states are. But I, I believe they do have like predators, though. They do have predators, but I don't think like even all the freaking bears or or uh, otters in the world can eat that many fish. <laughs> trying everything they can to stop the carps from spreading, from shocking the water to hurting them with enormous. Nets. Shocking the water. They have even created a sport to try and get rid of them. Yo. Since this is America, of course, the sport is just shooting them. For example, <laughs> in Kentucky, the Department of Fish and Wildlife hosts Absolutely. tournaments where participants kill as many of the fish as they possibly can. What? With the winner That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. I wonder if anybody actually tried throwing a stick of dynamite into the, the river to blow them up. You probably get a lot of carp that way. Either that or just chum from all the bits and pieces. Taking home $10,000. But another way people that's really come good to help that's actually really good species is by simply eating them yes the fish yes. is very healthy has minimal to no mercury is packed with vitamins and minerals and Yo, man. for overall health that's a limited exactly food source man don't eat it number seven what toads. invasive cane yo that's like an unlimited resource man like that fish specifically since they breed so much you could just live off of it we should have we should have silver carp stew. We should have silver carp burgers. <laughs> we should have uh, silver carp uh, hot dogs. Oh, that, that sounds kind of gross, but Paint you know, you know what I'm the saying. Most destructive animals on the entire planet, and in many cases, have single-handedly collapsed entire ecosystems. Damn. The toad is native to South and mainland Central America, but thanks to humans, they have been introduced to various parts of the world. Okay. Let's just take a look at Australia, since it's perhaps the place that has been the most devastated. In 1935, 102 cane toads were released into the so world how big? in hopes that they would eat. Them. So, how big do cane toads actually get? They can't, they can't be bigger than, like, bull, bullfrogs or anything. If they were released in Australia, like, wouldn't they have, like, more predators over there? Like, Australia is wild, man. I think they have, like, a spider that could eat birds over King there. Grub, a small larva that was decimating sugarcane crops. Sugar scientists must have just taken a look at their names and figured that the cane toad must eat yeah. the cane grub. And grubs. Since their names were practically <laughs> a match. Makes sense. But as it turns <laughs> out, the cane toad eats just about everything. From Damn. birds, insects, birds? reptiles, rodents, and even dog food. But the Yo, one thing crazy. they don't eat, you guessed it, are the cane grubs. And just to rub it in the wow. scientists' faces, they would even prefer to eat trash before Yo. the grubs. Yo, what a waste. Like, imagine bringing something that just completely destroys your ecosystem over to your land. And it doesn't even do the task you, you wanted it to do. And it causes so much collateral damage. Scientists yet again, That's how much of so bad, so bad. Are. Today, there are around 200 million cane toads in Australia. 
and that number is only growing. Damn. Now, let's just take a look at the Kane Oh Toto my close. god, it is at huge! First glance, you might think, not bad. Solid forearms, great traps, and decent Great mats. traps. It <laughs> makes the common mistake of ignoring half its body. Now, it may come yeah. as a surprise, but those <laughs> no leg are day. its traps. Those are... Skip leg day. But damn, they are huge. They're just as big as bullfrogs, man. If I'm not mistaken, am I, am I thinking of bullfrogs or Pac-Man frogs? Yo, Pac-Man frogs are vicious, bro. They're actually parotid glands where deadly poison is released. In fact, this poison has led it's to a poisonous massive decline too. of quolls, monitor lizards, wow. crocodiles, and snakes, which are all native and important to Australia's ecosystem. Wow, but the good man. news is that some animals are just now beginning to adapt to the toad's poison. What a loss. For example, the Ruckley had begun to flip toads over, avoiding the poison glands, then surgically removing and eating the toad's hearts. I bet. And surprisingly, I bet. cane toads eat so much of the native wild. See, I guess that, I guess that kind of answers my, uh, like, predator problem i did i didn't realize they produced a uh, poison that's actually kind of op but hey if the animals are adapting to it that's good that's actually a good sign life that nothing is left for other cane toads so they have turned to eating the most abundant source of food each other if you yeah. live in australia that's another thing come across a frogs toad, are cannibalistic it's recommended that you pick them up and place them inside of your fridge for 24 hours why would you do that for a couple of days before finally throwing them in the trash why Number would you six, do that was he joking because like if it's recommended then i'm like yo don't they have poison on them isn't that like a huge freaking problem i think he was just joking about it <laughs> the war with rabbits is perhaps the bloodiest in all of history australia the war with rabbits hit the hardest by these destructive pests but today we're just going to take a look at australia as i believe it's been hit the worst of the two in 1859 a man named thomas austin a wealthy settler imported mm. 24 wild rabbits from england he released the animals on his property so he can later hunt them for sport and eat them it always so seems to be quickly, like a lone person escape and the rabbit Who's involved with this exploded with no natural predators those 24 rabbits multiplied to over 10 billion yeah this is what Ten. they look like i don't believe that i honestly don't believe that i i know uh rabbits they go at it like freaking wild monkeys and shit but like 10 billion is is wild you can you can have like a whole rabbit production farm just from that like, Yo, maybe he was on to something. Easily collapsed the entire ecosystem of Australia by consuming the majority of the vegetation, That's nuts. leaving That's very absolutely little nuts. for the native animals. Australians tried their best to hunt as many of the animals as they Ooh, could. That's but wild. No matter how many they killed, it wouldn't come close to making a dent. So yeah. Yo, but that's like good. That's like good eating, man. That's like so many rabbits, and look how big those freaking rabbits were. Look how big they are. That's good eating, man. Never had rabbit in my life, but I, I just, if, if it was the only option, I, I would totally go for it. Best to hunt as many of the animals as they could, but no matter how many they killed, it wouldn't yeah. come close to making a dent. Yeah. So instead, the Australian government turned to bioweapons. In the 1950s, oh, that's, that's true a desperation virus called Myxoma virus, Myxoma. which wiped out a good chunk of the population. But eventually, the rabbits developed immunity to the virus. <laughs> so again, in the 1980s, scientists released. I was going to say to add, the, uh, the rabbits this mutated. Rabbit hemorrhagic disease, which only took 48 hours to kill and would wow. end up eradicating 90% of the rabbit population in many areas but once again the rabbits began to develop yeah. immunity today this game of catch yo continues. animals adapt so fast holy shit million rabbits in australia happily destroying everything they touch Damn. number five yo but like animals adapt really quickly like i didn't expect like the animals the predatory animals to adapt to the uh cane toads poison but they did they figured out to flip them over and eat their entrails and shit but like those rabbits i mean if all else failed, at least Australia could have been like the rabbit meat capital of the world. Yo, they could have capitalized on it. But Australia has a really like diverse and unique uh, ecosystem. So that had been a shame to lose. That really would be. But I wonder why like coyotes and stuff. It's just like, I'm pretty sure they, they ate the rabbits and stuff. Dingoes. I'm pretty sure they just ate the rabbits and shit. But like I said before, when you have that many, can you really eat that many rabbits? Rodents. Why does it always have to be rats? 
probably the most obvious pick on the list and rats are, easily the most rats annoying are, huge too. are rats and mice. These disgusting little pests have been following humans yeah. around the world for at least 15,000 years. But <laughs> who can blame them? After all, humans leave behind the best loot. The best now, in food. the majority of cities and towns, rats and mice are just... And rats eat sense. anything, really. But of course, in places like New York, they're just your roommates. One of the places where invasive rats yeah. and mice have caused the most Yo, taking on New York. Is actually New York gets no love. For example, islands like Hawaii, Galapagos Islands, and New Zealand have mm. seen a massive decline in their wildlife and forests since rats and because mice of rat? arrived. New Zealand... Yo, I thought those places already had, like, rodents to some degree, though. Like, I feel like every every place on Earth has rodents to some degree. ...alone has lost 40 to 50% of their bird species, and many more are currently facing the threat That's of extinction. Nuts. This is because rats consume the majority of the native animals foods yeah like insects seeds nuts and fruit yeah but they course, eat anything they'll also eat the animals themselves what and when animals finally build up the courage to eat the mice or rats for a change it quickly backfires I don't... since the odds of them getting sick from a deadly disease skyrockets. Wow. Now, even though I didn't realize that. Even though eat rodents, they reproduce at such high rates that it makes yeah. it impossible to eradicate them completely. But he said like the rats were eating birds. Like, would a rat eat a bird? I don't I don't ever recall seeing a rat ever attack a avian animal. Number four, Burmese python. The Burmese python is one of the largest snakes in the world. Oh, yeah, those things are a problem down here in Florida, too. And reticulated python. I and think. to Southeast Asia, this snake would make its way into Florida in the 1980s yeah, yeah, yeah. and 90s, thanks to exotic animal collectors. You see, man, it's always the collectors, man. Owners only saw a snake that only required a baby mouse or two to survive. But eventually, the snake would grow larger and larger, requiring yeah. bigger and more expensive, more expensive meals. Uh, like meals yeah. Or bird, and eventually a chipotle burrito. So realizing that they are slowly going <laughs> That's actually a good one. losing hope that someone would someday say, cool. Yo, those Chipotle burritos are so good, bro. Like, they, they really are huge, man. Those things can feed like a damn a bear, bro. But Burmese pythons, like, it was always the people who want exotic pets, like pythons and shit, that always makes them invasive. Like, they always get in and they get out. But, like, if they only have one, like, how do they even reproduce? I could understand, like, they cause damage to the environment. But I, I guess maybe the the exotic pet collector got get like two. I don't know, man. Well, snake. They come to the logical conclusion of simply releasing the snake into the wild, making their problem everyone else's. Everyone else's. Today, <laughs> there are tens of thousands of Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades, consuming yeah. just about anything that moves. That's actually a lot. Animals to alligators and crocodiles. That's actually and a lot more than I thought. Everglades, animals have two hundred thousand over ninety. That's nuts. After the snake's arrival. Today, many people in Florida hunt these snakes as a full-time job, yeah. earning as much as $150 for every eight-foot snake they catch. Yo, I feel like I feel like I, I, could, I could actually find one of those in my backyard if I tried. <laughs> Maybe I should become a Burmese python hunter, man. The difficult part is that these snakes are some of the best at hide and seek, since they love to hide in dense vegetation, underground, yeah. in the water, and even in the trees. Uh, the snakes are very versatile. Events, when you least expect very versatile it, animals. these snakes could find and tag you. Oh, so yeah, the toilet. <laughs> the snakes to work their way through plumbing systems and into toilets. That's actually even nuts, bro. memes are funny, we have to give credit where credit is due. Florida can hang their alligator skin hat knowing that they are currently in first place for having the most amount of invasive animals on the planet. Oh, Number shit, three, really? Wild. We got that many? I didn't even really realize that. We have that many damn invasive animals? Holy shit, we got invasive fish. Fish seem like the worst. The actual worst. I don't know. Rat Those rabbits were like, they said 10 billion rabbits. That was pretty bad too. Axis, Axis. Yo, we don't have any phoenix foxes though. That's the thing. We need some phoenix foxes. I love those things. Those things are so cute. You just, I want one as a pet, but you can't have one as a pet. I don't really even like having pets. <laughs> Number three, wild pigs. This is the only animal on the list that I've encountered firsthand. Yeah. And trust me, they are as mean and disgusting as they look. I've had wild pigs threaten to charge at me up close. But once to charge at my insane physique, it of course cowered it out by not chasing me. 
Wild pigs are native to Eurasia <laughs> and parts of North Africa, but were brought over to the U.S., Australia, and Europe as a food source. Yeah, there are. Uh... Never guess what happened next. They escaped, and in the wild, they're. I I also heard they uh I heard also heard they don't taste that great. Either that or it was wild boars. Like I heard boar meat like wasn't really that good, and I was thinking like, yo, they're so bad. It should be like good to eat them, but I guess they're not as good as like meat quality quickly exploded. One interesting thing to know is that it took humans thousands of years to domesticate wild pigs into the smooth mm -hmm. and gentle pink giants we see on farms today. But if yeah. that same pig managed to escape into the wild in a it, matter of months, yeah. <laughs> it would revert back to it would revert back. Form yeah. and look like this. Which makes me sick just looking at it. Pigs are another thing that could just eat like anything, I feel. A wild pig can grow as large like, as pigs can actually eat you. Pounds. And before you say, if it's given the opportunity. Godzilla? He was much larger, but that was nothing more than a cheap and disgusting that real? trick that hunters like to abuse, making the animal look much larger. Yeah, no, no, that wasn't real. I only do this when holding a fish. After Forced all, perspective. How else would I convince my friends that I know what I'm doing? Now let's talk about why <laughs> these animals are so destructive. For one, pigs are omnivores and opportunistic feeders, so yep. they will eat pretty much anything, leaving yep. nothing behind for native animals. One of the most destructive habits of wild pigs is rooting, where they dig into the ground to consume yeah. the plant's roots, which destroys yeah. the soil and kills native plants. Prevent they also do this when they're trying to find, uh, I forgot what those things were called, like truffles? Truffles overseas? They use pigs to find them, but like, no, I actually don't think they use pigs anymore because the pigs, they would dig for them. And then like when they found them, there's a chance that they would eat them. So it was not very productive to use pigs for truffles. I don't, I don't understand the uh, importance <laughs> of truffles. They're just like a fancy thing to put on food. Venting them from growing again. Another terrible habit that pigs have is wallowing, where they roll around in the mud next to yeah. a water source, contaminating the water with bacteria, bacteria. diseases, and their parasites, crap. which affects the native wildlife that drink the water. Now, yeah. here in America, farmers and landowners are sick of these pigs and are fighting back the only way we know how. To kill them. By shooting them with high shooting them with machine guns <laughs> from helicopters. Oh, dude, After I saw all, that before, yeah. man. They actually use helicopters to, like, put them down in fields. Yo, that, that job has to be so freaking bolstered, bro. Like, I wouldn't mind doing that as a job. That'd be freaking awesome. Just flying around on a helicopter. Just shooting uh, shooting wild pigs. I wouldn't mind that. I also seen videos where they had, like, this, this trap. It was, like, a circle trap. And they would wait until, like, a bunch of pigs just, like, go in there with the bait and stuff. And then the trap would just slam shut on them. And it was actually it was actually pretty cool, but I think this is ultimately like the cooler the cooler option. Copters. After all, there is no other way. Now I know what you're thinking. Lucky them. But don't I know, worry. right? <laughs> you can always pay to experience this for yourself. Number oh, two, really? You have to pay snake. for that. The Holy crap! The snake is a mildly venomous snake native to Australia, Indonesia, and Papua. Yo, that's Guinea. too that's but too high a price. In the 1940s, the honestly. US military accidentally brought the snake to Guam, most likely in shipping containers or in cargo. Today, there are around two million of these snakes on the island. Wow! There are around three thousand snakes per square mile, making it almost impossible not to run into them. Here on the island, yeah. picking up common items like tree what branches, poisonous? logs, and cords are all a frightening game of roulette. Oh. The brown tree snake is the only species of snake on the entire island, which hasn't allowed enough time for the native animals to adapt accordingly, yeah. leading to seven out of 18 native bird species to become extinct. That is nuts. Water. That is nuts. Imagine how many how many birds that, that could be, man. I, I wonder if they actually have a Cadillac, uh, a Cadillac, a catalog of all the birds that went extinct on the island because of that uh, snake. Ecosystem. So many lost. But not so many only lost. Are snakes eating all the native animals on the island. They are also constantly causing power outages since mm. they love to climb on transformers and electrical lines, causing <laughs> them to short circuit. Today, U.S. authorities are fighting Yo, back by using every animal I've ever seen mice onto go onto like electrical line just the gets free pulverized. Meal comes with a deadly amount of painkillers, which are glued onto the mice, causing the snakes to die soon after eating them. Wow. But only time will tell if this proves to be an effective way of controlling the snake population before all the native birds and animals are completely wiped out. Number one feral cats. Who would have thought that these cute and cuddly animals would be capable yeah. of so much death and destruction? Well, anyone who lives with one cat told you that. <laughs> yes, the deadliest and most destructive. Yo, cats are ruthless, bro. 
Gold was right next to us the entire time. And in all honesty, we should have seen this one coming yeah. since all the signs were there. Yeah. <laughs> to see just how much of an impact cats can have on an ecosystem, or in this case, an entire continent. We just have to take a look at Australia. In the 18th century, cats arrived in Australia on ships to mm. help manage the rat and mouse populations. But over time, cats got sick just of being like... around humans and figured that starting a new life in the Australian outback was a way better option. And in no time, the feral cat population exploded. Yo, like I said before, it's crazy how like all these animals could just adapt to new surroundings, man. Like cats, I feel like are the most, the most adaptable to certain situations because they, they're agile. They can, they can catch prey pretty easily. They can evade things pretty easily. They can climb shit. Like cats are everywhere. Hey, there are anywhere from two to 10 million cats in the wild and are directly linked to the extinction of many native species and the endangerment of hundreds more. And since cats have no natural predators and many options for food, that number is only growing. Damn. It's estimated that 1 million native birds and reptiles are killed every single day by feral cats. Yeah, and but well over a billion animals every single year. Wow, that's nuts. The that's actually pretty nuts. On the planet. So in an yeah, cats are like super predators. The only thing they can't take down is a, a human, unless they have like rabies or some shit. Attempt to lower the feral cat population, authorities are deploying poison baits in areas with high concentration of cats. And in certain areas, hunters are paid to trap and kill the animals. <laughs> why, being paid $10 why do you draw them like spend. that? <laughs> now another tactic that is being implemented is simply giving up. Creating a 27-mile yeah. cat-free zone by enclosing it with an electric fence to protect native animals, essentially providing them with a little safe haven inside yeah. a maximum security prison. <laughs> That's not going to happen. That's absolutely not going to happen. Wow, what an interesting video. Good enough. Great, great stuff, man. Yeah, uh, a lot of these I didn't even know were invasive animals, like cats. Well, to some degree, I probably knew cats were invasive animals. Uh, bunnies to Australia, that one actually... That one actually surprised me because I feel like there'd be a lot of predators in Australia um, being able to control that, but apparently not. You know, we all bring this. It's like, it seems like the human race just brings this upon themselves. Like I was under the conception that, that uh, even though an animal is invasive to an a area, eventually like the ecosystem will balance itself out. And in a lot of ways, I guess I was wrong because that shit didn't happen in a lot of cases. <laughs> Like, think of all the, the other animals that went extinct. I mean, to some degree, maybe the ecosystem balanced out by the other animals just dominating and then just kind of settling there. But like all the other species that just went extinct because of the, the invasive animals presence. It's just, it's just a, a tragic thing. But uh, yeah, this was entertaining to say the least. And uh, I got my... My home state of Florida on there. <laughs> I'm gonna go out in the back and find me a Python, bro. I'm gonna get that a hundred bucks for sure. Yo, you, you guys let me know what you think about the video. Comment, like, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for more notifications if you want more videos for the content machine, Malcolm Extreme. And go check out this video. The link will be in my basement from Good Enough. Take it easy.